Good morning, boys and girls. It's Miss Christy. And Miss Carol. We're so glad you're with us today. What's our topic? Flowers. Oh, flowers? Have you seen them starting to come up in your garden? Yellow ones or purple ones? Maybe even pink. Keep a lookout. Enjoy the books. Our first story is the story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leap. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to sit just quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head I like it better here, where I can sit just quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome, and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting, leaping and jumping so the men would think that they were the very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting and instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him, and that is just what the bee did to Ferdinand. Wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of all, just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing, and all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the banderilleros with long sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the bull and make him mad. Next came the picadors who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the bull and make him madder. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and he was supposed to stick the bull last of all. Then came the bull, and you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce, and all the bandoleros were afraid of him, and the picadors were afraid of him, and the matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. Not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers and all the lovely ladies' hair, and he just sat down quietly 
and smelled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the bandoleros were mad and the picadores were mad and the matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he is sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. The end. No Roses for Harry by Jean Zion. No Roses for Harry. Harry was a white dog with black spots. On his birthday, he got a present from Grandma. It was a woolen sweater with roses on it. Harry didn't like it the minute he saw it. He didn't like the roses. When he tried it on, he felt cozy and snug, but he still didn't like the roses. He thought it was the silliest sweater he'd ever seen. The next day, when Harry went downtown with the children, he wore his new sweater. When people saw it, they laughed. When dogs saw it, they barked. Harry made up his mind then and there to lose Grandma's present. When they went into the big store to shop, the children took off his sweater and let him carry it. This is just what Harry wanted. First, he tried to lose it in the pet department. But a man found it and gave it back. Then he tried to lose it in the grocery department. But a lady found it and gave it back. He tried to lose it in the flower department. But a little boy found it and gave it back. The children didn't let Harry carry it anymore. They made him wear it. As they started for home, Harry was beginning to think he'd never lose it. When he got home, his friends were waiting to play with him. But Harry didn't feel like playing, so they left him alone. As he sat wondering what to do, Harry noticed a loose stitch in his sweater. And he pulled at the wool, just a little at first then a bit more, then a bit more. Harry didn't know it, but a bird was watching. In a minute, Harry had pulled out quite a long piece of wool. The end of it lay on the grass behind him. Suddenly, the bird flew down, and quick as a flash, she took the end of the wool in her beak and flew away with it. It all happened before Harry could even blink. The sweater began to disappear right before Harry's eyes. First one leg, then the neck, then the other leg, then the back, and finally the whole thing was just one long, long piece of wool flying off into the sky. The sweater was gone. Harry could hardly believe it. He barked and jumped with joy. Then he ran out of the yard. He ran down the street barking thank you to the bird over and over again. The bird and the wool were just a tiny speck in the sky, but Harry kept following them. He came home thirsty and tired and was having a drink in the kitchen when the children ran in. We got a letter from Grandma, one of them said. She's coming to visit us, shouted the other. Harry thought of the sweater. His tail drooped. Before Grandma came, the family looked everywhere for the sweater. They wanted her to see how nice Harry looked in it. Of course, they couldn't find it. Only Harry knew why. When Grandma arrived, Harry ran to her with his leash. Then he sat up and begged. All right, Harry, said Grandma. After I've had my lunch and a nap, we'll go for a walk. That afternoon, 
Harry and Grandma and the children started off on their walk. Harry barked happily and pulled towards the park. When they got to the park, Harry pulled harder. The children let him off his leash, and he ran on ahead. He seemed to be looking for something. All at once, he stopped under a big tree. He looked up, and he began to bark and wag his tail. And Grandma and the children came running over. They got to the tree and looked up, too. Suddenly, one of the children said, I see a nest. It's made of wool, said the other. And it's the very same color as Harry's sweater, they shouted together. It is Harry's sweater, exclaimed Grandma. Just then, a bird looked out of the nest. Look, Grandma, look, shouted the children. Harry gave his sweater to the, a bird. I wonder how he did that, said Grandma. The bird sang, and Harry wagged his tail even harder. At Christmas, Harry got a present from Grandma. It was a new sweater. Harry liked this one very much. When he tried it on, it felt cozy and snug as the bird's nest. But best of all, it was white with black spots.